Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at dictionaries, we're going to look at how we can add and remove items from a dictionary, we're going to look at some interesting ways that we can use a dictionary, um, and I'm going to try and use a kind of a game theme a little bit, um, and we're just going to mess around a little bit, we're just going to see where this tutorial goes, where it takes us, and you know, I'm probably going to think of questions as I go along, and and yeah, just have a bit of fun with it really. Um, don't worry about the code that's on the screen at the moment. We are going to just kind of jump around a little bit. We're going to come back to this code um, as we go through. Um, but essentially, I've got two elements here. I've got a function that resets keys um, or resets a dictionary. And I've got a dictionary containing some items um, or some information. It's kind of like my information about the keys, where I get them from and the value. Things that I might use in a game um, later on. But let's just imagine that I'm a computer character and I have to. The, the whole purpose of this game is to go around collecting keys. Um, I don't know why, but that's that just seems to be the case for many games. Um, so if I'm a character and I've got to collect keys, I've probably got to put them in something. So let's call it my key bag. Um, now, <clears throat> I don't have any keys at the moment, I've only just started the game. So I'm going to use the function here reset keys. Um, and when I do that, what happens is if I, if I print key bag, you will see that this function is called and it returns a dictionary containing three keys, uh, bronze, silver, and gold. All of them are set to none at the moment. Okay. Or I really, I could, I could set them to false cause I don't, I don't actually have those keys yet. Maybe when I get the keys, I'll set them to true. Okay, so uh, let's print the bag and let's uh, just check that that dictionary is working. Uh, it does. I've got bronze, silver and gold all set to full. So we're okay with that so far. Okay, now um, that was a very simple way of, of printing all the keys, and uh, the, all the values in the bag. But um, there are nicer ways of doing it. Um, so for key and value in my key bag dot items I'm going to print the key followed by um, something like an arrow followed by the value so let's I'm going to print the two together so you can see the the two versions the, I'll put the, the original one just here and the new version below just so you can see how it looks Okay, so the original version printed like this, and the second version, because I ran it through a for loop, prints the key, which is bronze, and then the value that it stores, which is false, silver false, gold false. I can also do something along the lines of um, print key bag position bronze, just to see whether or not I've got the bronze um, version okay and i'm just going to hide those for the moment um that's a shortcut okay and you can see that key bag position bronze returns false if i was to change this to something like hippo you can see that when i run this code again because i create um my bag using the reset key function when I run this, instead of saying false this time, it should say hippo, and it does. So I know everything's working just fine, okay? So let's hide that as well. Let's comment that out. All right, and return that back to false because, you know, I don't really want to be carrying a hippo around in my bag. Okay. Um, that's cool so far. Um, now let's start to understand some of the other elements. So I've got this other dictionary. Now this dictionary is kind of weird because it contains a key and that key actually holds another dictionary. So this time I've got bronze and that dictionary contains location and value. So if I was to print the key details dictionary and I was, if I printed the whole thing, okay, um, in fact, let's use some of this code. Let's use the for loop version because I think that was the nicest version. Instead of using key bag item, let's remove the old bits because we don't need that anymore. Let's look at key details. 
And this time we're going to look at the key details, the items of key details, uh, and print the key, which should print bonds, and the value, which should return the dictionary for each one. So let's take a look at that. There we go. So bronze returns a dictionary, silver returns a dictionary, and gold returns a dictionary. Okay, so how can we start to use this? Well, now let's say we want from the value. Remember, the value is returning a dictionary. Well, let's say we only wanted to return the location of each key. Well, now I can use this because value we know is a dictionary. We can say, look at the value and let's look at location. So we're going to look at the location and it should just return Bronze Cave Wonder, Silver Tower of Doom, Gold Inferno, Volcano. So let's have a look. And it does. So our code now is starting to become much more complex but actually we haven't added that much complexity. We're just trying to understand that our program can contain data structures like a dictionary, which can contain other data structures. So I've got a key and then it returns a new dictionary and that dictionary has a key and its own values. Okay. So each dictionary here has two values, location and value, and a value that is returned from, um, each one of these keys. All right, so I haven't actually collected any keys yet. Okay, um, so let's say we've, we've, we're playing the game and my character um, collects some keys. So how do I go about changing some of these values? Well, I've already got a key bag, it's been set up. Now let's say in my game, I've actually collected um, the, the first key, which is the bronze key. I've gone to the Cave of Wonder. Um, and what I want to do is I want to just set the bronze key equal to true. Now, when I print this, when I print the new key details here, um, we'll see, let's, let's print before and after just so we can see what's going on. And I'll hide, um, in fact, I'll leave that bit there for the moment. Okay, so we've got the first, the first part is um, we're printing um, the bronze, silver, gold section. Then we're printing the key details. So remember, this is the entire uh, dictionary. That's the entirety of dictionary here. Okay, so we're seeing quite a lot and we can see um, Oh, I didn't mean to print key details. I meant to print key bag. Whoops, right. That's better. So uh, the first part is this for loop here. The next part here, we can see bronze was initially set to false. We then change the value stored in position bronze to true. So now bronze is equal to true. Okay, so let's write a little for loop that just kind of checks to see which keys I've got. Um, so for key and value in key bag dot items, if value is equal to true, print key followed by is in uh, key is in the bag else print key currently not found. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so bronze silver gold we know oh, that's where they're from that's from the original for loop and then I've set the key um, bag bronze equal to true so now we go through this loop for each key value in bag items if the value is set to true remember value here is a boolean variable because it's set to true or false if the key is in the bag if the value is set to true then we're going to say the key is in the bag otherwise we're going to say key is key is currently not found so bronze key 
is in the bag because we know bronze, we set it to true. Originally it was set to false. Then it looks at the next key value pair and we know that the value is set to false, so silver is not found and gold currently not found. So that's cool. That's we, We've quite quickly made a simple program that allows us to check which keys we've got and um, uh, you know, use the information in the in here to help us establish whether or not we can maybe progress. Maybe we want to unlock the door, okay? Um, a, a special door that needs three keys. So we could have something like uh, let's change this for loop to be something like um, key count equals zero. I'm going to say if the value in the key is equal to um, true, then we're going to do key count plus equals one. If it's not there, we're not going to do anything with it. So I can just remove that part. And then I can have a question here, like if key count equals three, that means we've got all the keys, then print door opening else print door remains closed come back when you have all of the keys so let's have a look at that at the moment it says door remains closed because we haven't got all of the keys but now let's say we're going to change all of these to true as well so as we go through the game we're going to update the silver we're going to update the gold let's run it and now it should say the door is opening because we've got all the keys okay so really simple tutorial kind of a little silly one there um just kind of explaining how you can create a um a simple dictionary kind of program and use those dictionaries to help you keep track of different things in your program um and in fact, there's one other thing I, I, I should mention, right? Let's imagine we've gone through this whole game and then we've uh, encountered a boss and the boss kills us. And when the boss kills us, this game's pretty cruel. It empties our bag. Well, we can just simply do key bag equals reset keys. Call that function and you'll see that now um, key bag reset keys key bag oh it's because key count sorry um i should really put this after but um when that happens we'd have to reset the uh key count as well but if i print the key bag there's a little error key bag it will show us that all of our keys are empty okay um that shouldn't have opened but it does because i use the counter but you get what i mean so anyway, I hope you found that tutorial useful. Um, it can certainly be applied to the uh, airport uh, problem. That's for the AQA 2021 uh, problem, where you've got to keep track of a number of things like have the flight details been entered? Um, has the plane been selected? Has the plane even got the right um, uh, range? Um, all because you're able to look up maybe flight details in a similar way. Maybe each one of these is a plane type and these are the values that are associated with that plane kind of thing. Um, so, you know, take a look at that. Anyway, all right, ciao for now and I'll uh, catch you on the next tutorial.